You know the statement, you cannot learn from anime or manga? Well, after watching this episode, we can clearly say that that statement is incredibly wrong. Because I learned a lot from Shokugeki no Soma, the series, but also from this episode. Salmon. That is the big thing I learned about in this episode. Salmon is something that I've ate quite a few times throughout growing up and all that since I was born in Florida. I've had my fair share of eating fish and all that, different dishes of fish. And in this case, salmon is something I have ate and I've always been a big fan of salmon. I haven't had it recently in recent times. I actually haven't had it in the past few years, but I do like salmon. And this episode gives some insight on how some would prep salmon that honestly I just never thought about. And in general, fish as well, because it's not something that I really can actually understand, or I didn't understand until it was explained in this episode of Shokugeki no Soma. So to get right into it, I was just going to say, I... Every time I watch this series, I get incredibly jealous. And the reason why I get jealous is because, number one, I really wish I could be there in the show and eat that food that is constantly made. Because the food looks amazing, delicious, and I always get hungry. If I haven't ate anything, I always get hungry. And even if I did eat something, I want to eat that, what's in the show. It's because the food always looks so good, and the way it's explained and how it's made, it just makes your mouth water to where you actually want more, or you want some of it. And in this case, though, this episode... Basically, it explains how these two individuals cook their fish and kind of how they can preserve the flavor of salmon. In this case, how some would wrap it in bacon and then how some would decide to just wrap it in rice and all that and have this layer of, you know, seeing spinach or celery, whatever people want to use. It's very interesting. And that's kind of what this episode is showing. Different ways to prep it, but also keep the salmon fresh in its flavor. And that is what really stood out to me while watching this episode episode because have you ever heard of bacon wrapping something? I think all of us, probably one point in our time in our lives, we have seen someone try to bacon wrap something. Maybe you have cooked something and wrapped it in bacon, or you've seen some food that someone else has made wrapped in bacon, or some form of meat. Well, that is something I have personally seen. Like, for instance, bacon wrapped jalapenos. That's what I really love. I really love bacon wrapped peppers. It's something I really love to, you know, just eat on. And in this case, when I saw this episode, I was like, bacon wrapped salmon? That Makes a lot of sense. That sounds incredibly good. And the reason for it was to keep the juices of the fish inside of it to where it didn't leak out and cause it to where it would lose its flavor. And the explanation on why some would choose to wrap it up and how they would cook it at a certain temperature truly astounded me. I was like, yo, what? That was what really got me was that... Usually you have to cook something at a certain temperature, which makes a lot of sense. That is something I already know. I'm fully aware of that you have to keep, you know, cooking something at a certain temperature to keep it tender to where it doesn't get very hard or brittle or whatever, how normal food is when you try to heat it up or whatever. And so that is showcasing that aspect of it. But when you still cook something, the juices of something is going to leak out, especially fish, meat, whatever. And to keep that juices inside of it, sometimes you're going to need to wrap it up or put it in something like olive oil or something to be able to maintain that integrity of of the fish or any type of food you're trying to do in this case that's what was done and I was really shocked by what I learned about that I was like that's not something I knew I'm definitely gonna have to you know use that aspect next time I really try to cook something because you know I, I love to go fishing as well with my dad every so often so we do have some fish every so often to eat and th that's definitely something I want to keep in mind if I go catch some bass or something or walleye that's definitely something I want to do because of what I saw in this episode now let's talk about Ro for a second and what he did that really surprised me. Ro used spices. He used something that he normally doesn't do. He emphasized spice and that's how he managed to come on top with his dish at the end of this episode. He actually learned how to mix certain spices together and make it work out. In this case, it shows how much he has changed and learned since he first went up against, you know, the final contestants of the end of Season 2. I'm like, yo, like, this is incredibly interesting to see how this man has learned to, you know, go a little bit deeper with his cooking, do stuff that he never used to do. He learned from it, snatched it, and is now adding it to his dishes, and that is what he displayed. That's actually what caused him to win in the end, and how much he has actually changed as a chef. He is now incorporating these certain type of seasonings and these extra things into something to make it taste a lot better. So just props on Roe for being able to do that. So let's talk about something else. Gastronomy. Gastronomy, once again, was a big focus of this episode. 
which makes a lot of sense because, I mean, Ro, he has a lot of knowledge when it comes to that as well since he hangs out around, you know, Alice all the time. It's obvious that he would have some understanding to it. And it also, I like how he was fighting someone like that because it does show that, you know, he's not going to let someone that uses a similar cooking style to Alice to be able to beat him. And he managed to come on top and win against it even though it was a really really unique way to cook. I mean, every time I see that, using these high-tech machines and all that, be able to cook food in a certain temperature and all that, it just astounds me because stuff stuff like that actually does exist. That is stuff used in, you know, real life to be able to cook stuff. Now, I'm not going to say that it automatically is going to be the best thing to cook with because sometimes old-fashioned stuff, maybe cooking over, like, you know, wood or whatever, could be a lot better than using that. It just really depends on what you're trying to cook or what how you're trying to cook. And so, seeing that, I'm like, I like how this, you know, science stuff like you know the, this actual high-tech technology that we use in food today is being used and how it's just very realistic and I think that's one of the big reasons why I really respect you know Shokugeki no Soma is because the writer adds stuff like this in so anyways let's get off of that okay let's you know get off that let's talk about some of the funny moments of this episode number one Foodgasms. Yes, this episode had some foodgasms, which makes sense. I mean, it is a big part of, you know, Shokugeki no Soma. I mean, anytime a female character, even a guy character, actually, it's not just females, but guy characters as well, when they eat some very good food, we expect foodgasms, and that's what we got quite a few times throughout this episode. I mean, we even had, like, a lollygasm, and I was like, what? I was like... Okay, okay, but we had some really good moments overall. Megami, for instance, like, yo, like that scene. So, just, there, there was some funny moments overall, and I like the reactions from everyone, so I have really no disappointment when it comes to that. Now, another segment that was really funny that caught my attention, I think is the highlight of the episode for me, was definitely the arena scene. When she was by herself, sitting on the bed and all that, that's what really got me. Like, that was, like I said, highlight of the episode. I mean, it may not have served as much progression or the best part in terms of the cooking or whatever, but that part just, you know, it made me smile because it was so interesting to see Arena, this character that always used to be stuck up and never really showed a lot of emotion. She just seemed to be a really annoying character. I'm going to be honest, that's how I felt about her when I first saw her. And seeing how she was just sitting down all that, she was just, you know, like, rocking and all that and just looking, like, blank-faced, I'm like, this this is very cute and adorable. I'm actually liking her quite a bit, especially from that scene. But then, once that was done, Ishiki pops up in the ceiling. Like, this man's in the ceiling, okay? And he's like, oh, okay, where is everybody? And then he comes down on a rope. Like, are you kidding me right now? Like, that is legit creepy. Like, can we just take a moment to process this, okay? This is a man that wears basically nothing around the place, around the house and all that. And so he's in your ceiling, and he pops down with a rope. How, how creepy is that? That's, that's really creepy, if you really think about it. So I couldn't help but laugh there. That was definitely a highlight of the episode. So I will hand Shukugeki no Soma for that. You got a good laugh out of me. Now, obviously, there's some out there that might not find that funny because, I mean comedy, you know, subjective, it's a big thing and all that, but yeah, that's about it, I mean, episode overall, I really like it, there was a lot of good moments, especially with, you know, Rowan and Alice as well, so, I mean, there was a lot to love with this episode, it was another glorious way to showcase food and why we love this series so much, so let me know your thoughts in the comments below, how do you feel about this week's episode, did you enjoy it, did you hate it, please be honest in the comments below, and I love you guys, please be safe, if you enjoy my content, please subscribe, and if you like this video, please leave a like, Chibi out.